How's it going everyone, it's Gadgets Boy. Welcome to another video. And Samsung just announced three new devices, the Samsung Galaxy S20 range. And in this video, we're gonna give you a rundown of everything that you need to know. And my first impressions perhaps tell you what you should go for, which one you should go for if you're thinking of getting a new Samsung Galaxy S20. Let's check it out. Samsung just announced three new devices, the Samsung Galaxy S20, S20 Plus, and the S20 Ultra. All the devices are 5G and in the UK will come with the Exynos 990 processor chip, so the latest Exynos processor. Something also coming with all of them is a Quad HD Plus 20 by 9 display with 120 hertz refresh rate, HDR10 Plus certification and 240 hertz touch response, which means when gaming you get a smooth experience. They can also shoot 4K at 60 frames per second and 8K at 30 frames per second. On all devices, Samsung also opted for the latest LPDDR5, which means you should see some improvements when it comes to memory management, multitasking, and running multiple applications simultaneously. The S20 is the smallest of all three of them, and I suspect Samsung will sell a lot of these. It comes with a 6.2 inch Infinity O display, and you can get an option for 128 gig storage with 12 gig of RAM, or 128 gig of storage with eight gig of RAM. On the back, you get triple camera setup. So you get a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera with f2.2 aperture. You got a standard wide angle lens, which is also 12 megapixel, but with f1.8 aperture and optical image stabilization. And you have a 64 megapixel telephoto lens at f2.2 with OIS as well. That zoom lens on the S20 can do 30 times hybrid zoom. On the front, you get 10 megapixel lens with f2.2 aperture and the S20 has a 4,000 milliamp hour battery which should last you all day. The S20 Plus comes with a slightly bigger 6.7 inch Quad HD Plus Infinity O display and only available with 128 gigabytes of storage and 12 gig of RAM configuration, which again, you can expand if you need to. On the camera, you have a 12 megapixel F2.2 ultra wide angle camera. You got 12 megapixel F1.8 wide angle with OIS and a 64 megapixel telephoto lens with f2.0 and OIS and a depth vision sensor as well. On the front is a 10 megapixel shooter with f2.2 aperture. Like the Ultra, you have a space zoom, which basically means you get hybrid optic zoom up to three times and a super res uh, zoom, which is up to 30 times as well. For battery, you get a 4,500 milliamp hour all day battery, which should last you again more than all day if you really use it uh, on a normal average usage. Onto the biggest one, which is the main one, the S20 Ultra is what I suspect will be aimed at power users. It has a huge 5,000 milliamp hour battery in there with, uh, it supports 45 watts of charging as well, so fast charging. So you can charge to 100% in just over an hour. You have 6.9 inch Quad HD Plus display, Infinity O of course, and all of them are dynamic AMOLED uh, display as well. This is available in 128 gig with 12 gig of RAM configuration or a 512 gigabyte storage with 16 gig RAM configuration, which is huge. And you can still expand the storage here as well, again, with up to one terabyte uh, micro SD card. It's IP68 water and dust resistant. All of them are, uh, by the way. And you've got 120 Hertz display, uh, which also supports HDR10+. The quad camera configuration on the back consists of a 12 megapixel ultra wide with f2.2 aperture, a whopping 108 megapixel wide with f1.8 aperture and OIS. You have a 48 megapixel telephoto lens with f3.5 aperture and a depth vision sensor. Just like the S20 Plus, you also get space zoom, which is a hybrid optic zoom up to 10 times on this one, and a super S zoom at 100 times. It's ridiculous. On the front is a 40 megapixel f2.2 and a 10 megapixel sensor. So you get that ultra wide angle uh, front facing selfie shots if you wanna get more people in, which is also useful for Google Duo if you're doing uh, video calling. The ultra can also shoot 8K video but what's amazing is that you can go back into that 8K video and grab a 33 megapixel still from it. So not a screenshot in this, in this scenario. So basically you gain a high resolution stills from your video. From all the hardware and software upgrades, night mode should be better compared to the S10. And you'll even be able to shoot night hyperlapse videos, which looks amazing. What's also awesome is you now have pro mode in video, so you can adjust aperture, shutter speed, ISO, and even change things like highlights, temperature, and more. Back to that new single tape mode, which is actually quite interesting. You'll be able to use all those camera lenses to capture a bunch of content at the same time, of which you can then get creative with, uh, depending on what you want to do. This helps you uh, cap to capture more content without having to worry about 
what you want to achieve in the moment. You can also capture a Super iRes 108 megapixel images and this is achieved using the Nona Binding or Remosaic, uh, meaning it captures 9 12 megapixel shots and binds them together to make a larger file at hardware level. It's great for those landscape photos, uh, so if you're a landscape photographer like me sometimes, at a glance, uh, you can just take a nice, big, like, large image and then you can edit it afterwards, depending on what you want to do. At a glance, is very quick in processing images as well, which is something I was worried about initially, but it's very quick. First impressions, the camera bump, I'm not a big fan of uh, on all the devices, but if you get a case, then it, it then goes flat, so you'll be able to hide it, sort of. The display on all three devices are amazing. It's actually really beautiful to look at. 8K video capture with the ability to grab a 33 megapixel still on the Ultra is amazing, uh, though that's more of a pro user feature, I would assume. The battery capacity uh, is very much welcome on, on the Ultra, although we need a real life test to see how that works. We all know what happens with Exynos devices when it comes to battery consumption. If you want the latest Samsung devices and uh, a crazy zoom is not your thing, then the S20 is absolutely fine. The size is compact enough. If you want the best of both worlds, then you get the plus. And if you want a pro user feature uh, like me, then you go for the Ultra. And I actually really like that. All of them are 5G ready. So that's it for the Samsung Galaxy S20 series uh, for this year. Guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have any questions, feel free to ask as well. And I'm always on Twitter at GadgetsBoy if you need to ask me any questions as well. In the meantime, if this is your first time on this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell notification as well. So you'll be one of the first people to know every time there's a video on this channel. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.